Uh, welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well and in today's video we're just going to take a quick look at this partial discharge calibrator from Omicron. Now this particular one is the Cal 542 and has a range of 1 picocoulomb up to 100 picocoulombs. Other ranges are available from Omicron, you specify that when you order the unit. The unit itself is an aluminium container, got these two little rubberized guards here and liquid crystal display to show you what output you're putting out of and then the BNC outlet at the top here you have also with it a set of test leads, 4mm standard jacks a set of crop clips that you would put onto the piece of equipment you're going to test and also an adapter to go from the BNC to these 4mm test leads so to operate the calibrator it's extremely easy you hit one button at the top there and this will take the picocoulomb output going upwards it only goes in set numbers so you have one and then you have two, five, ten, twenty, fifty, one hundred that's its full range and then it will actually then go to minus one hundred and go all the way back down and then when you hit the one it will switch itself off this other button here goes in the reverse direction, so we now start at minus one. Uh, or you can use this other button here, and you can take it to whichever value you want to test at. Um, there's a little sensor up here as well, and this is for light sensing, so it synchronizes itself to the mains that uh, you are operating from at the location you're operating at. Um, so what this unit does is it allows you to calibrate a machine for partial discharge measurements. When you make partial discharge measurements on an electrical apparatus, you can either collect it in millivolt or you can collect it in picocoulombs, which is referred to as apparent charge in the IEC 60270 standard. So this particular unit, so it comes from Omicron, um, it's come with this certificate of calibration slash conformance but you can see here there's no data on here there's no numbers or anything it's just a statement to say yes they have tested it which isn't really good enough for me I don't like that kind of approach so I'm going to run this up on an oscilloscope and record some data from it and then I will use that as a baseline for testing it in future to save me sending it back to Omicron for calibration and receiving another piece of paper saying yeah it's okay so unfortunately to do that, you do need quite a powerful oscilloscope, which I've got set at the back here. So I'm going to set that up and we'll put some signals into it. So because my intention is to actually carry out a calibration on the unit I have, whilst the scope here does have an independent calibration, prior to actually taking the measurements on the Omicron unit, I do want to test signal through the scope just to verify what's going on with it and I record the readings from that and again uh, that can act as another baseline and in future when I take measurements I can repeat this test just before just to make sure that everything is running okay with the oscilloscope it's just a precautionary measure just to give me a bit more credibility to the measurements I am making um, the unit that I'm using to inject the signal is down here in the corner this is from Leo Bodnar Electronics uh, it's a very, very fast rising pulse, which is typical of an actual partial discharge pulse. So it's also emulating that a little bit, only it's a different shape. It's obviously a square wave. And it's just powered from a USB power bank. Here you can see the actual uh, pulse injection unit there. And then there's my USB power bank providing the power to it. Let's go back up. The scope is just at a slight angle to stop reflections. That's the only reason why uh, it's not quite square. Um, so that's the pulse, I can get the amplitude and the frequency from that. I do get a rise time measurement, but to get it properly, what you need to do is expand out on the uh, horizontal scale there. And then you can see you get a bit better, more uh, less deviation, shall we say, in the actual rise time measurement there. So again, add that into the measurements that I have made. So I'll get this disconnected and we'll plug in the PD calibration unit. So here's our pulse that's being generated from the Omicron partial discharge calibrator. There it is sat over on the edge here. I'm generating 50 picocoulombs. 
um, the test circuit for this I'm putting this into a 1 nanofarad capacitor uh, that is then connected over onto the input channel of the oscilloscope and that forms the circuit there this pretty much emulates what you'd see on a machine. I just put this little video snippet up here. This is an actual uh, partial discharge calibrator connected up to a generator terminal. You can see the calibrator is a different unit to this one, but the calibrator is there. And you can follow it through onto the connection onto the actual generator terminal. And by the side of that to the right is the actual partial discharge coupler, which will be either 80 picofarads or 1 nanofarad usually. Um, that's what this unit here is emulating. So I've got a similar test circuit for an actual generator there. So I'll zoom back onto the signal. So again, uh, I've got my measurements in here in the corner. I've got 597 millivolts and frequency of 300 hertz. Our rise time at the moment is 15 microseconds, but that's because we've not zoomed in. And as I vary the amplitude on this, if we go up to 100, we can... Uh, 100 picocoulombs, I should say. We've got 840, yeah, about 900 millivolts. It's bouncing around a lot peak. Again, when I come back down and go smaller, back down to 20 picocoulombs, we have dropped down to 700 millivolts, 600 millivolts now. Uh, so we'll put him up there and we'll look at the actual rise time on an individual signal, really. Uh, expand him out. And you can see this typifies a partial discharge pulse out on the system. It's very, very high rise time. We're now down to 1.5, 1.4 microseconds rise time on that signal there. And we can go further if you like. I just probably won't get any better on it. And the only danger is you can end up picking up. You can see there's a lot of ripple on here on the signal. And that does therefore, you see all the bounce there. It's just the nature of the signal, really. Uh, unfortunately, what we can do to get rid of that is change the uh, loading on the channel. Um, put that down to 50 ohms, and then we can get rid of that. And scale them out a little bit more. And you see there's a... Probably that's the best one there. Uh, so you can see there, that would be a typical partial discharge pulse. If I was using the actual partial discharge acquisition equipment, that's the type of signal that would see if I zoomed down to signal level. Um, whereas in reality, you've got thousands of these little pulses going on through an insulation system that the whole system picks up and analyzes. Um, so there you have it. That's the little uh, discharge signal there. I said I will take a number of measurements of this and record values as a baseline. And then when I come back to recheck the operation of this calibrator again, I can haul these back up and compare them and trend them over time to see that the unit isn't failing. Obviously, all I can do is monitor this. If the unit does produce an error, then I will have to send it back to the manufacturer for uh, repair or calibration or probably even buy a new one, depending on what the, the relevant costs are for that. But that'll be it for this video. Uh, as I said, it's probably got limited interest to people, but I thought I'd put it out there anyway. Thanks very much for watching, hope you found it useful, and I'll see you again in the next one.